will AI disrupt the tech space? Look, first of all, I think we need to understand that AI is basically the next accelerator for digital transformation on companies. We did a study here in Asia, and it turns out that companies really think AI will drive double on innovation and double on productivity. That's pretty, pretty impactful if you look at the overall GDP growth which you put out of that one. And now you see it in reality in many, many industries coming through. So you go financial industry, 52% of companies in Asia are using AI already to build solutions for you as a customer. Uh, healthcare is awesome. We see great uh, things coming there, and especially in markets which need scale. Go to India, uh, making healthcare available for everybody at scale. We have great examples there. One I love at Narayana Hospital. It's a hospital which is using AI visual recognition for your x-rays. Quality is better, cost is down, scale is higher. That's what technology is about. Makes, makes me excited using that stuff. It powers growth, powers productivity, but yeah. at what cost? I mean, I, I mentioned how Elon Musk said it is an existential threat. So are people getting skilled and reskilled fast enough? Is there a sense of urgency among companies to do that? Yeah, first of all, I'm very clear and very convinced that AI is something which is augmenting us as human beings and not replacing us as human beings. I think that's one of the confusions people have. I'm very clear on that one. I think we, the way we use technology and want to be seen using technologies are very clear. Um, same study, data point, 60% more of all decision makers think they need to reskill that people. The amount of people need reskill is maybe up to 80, 85%. So we are all clear on an agenda to reskill. We ourselves, I have an aspiration actually for Asia that I think the next 12 months I need to have responsibility to help more than 1,000 people in our customers and government entities being retrained. Take Australia government, take Singapore government, take India government. With all of them, we have programs where we really take care on reskilling, getting people access to technology, and start that one. Can you quantify that commitment? I mean, you talk about Singapore, Australia, what kind of commitment, what kind of money amount that's being invested to scale and reskill? That one, it's very hard to put. I actually think it's more interesting to really go after the, the individual bodies. So we have a first number in uh, Australia officials. We train 5,000 people. We are shooting here for Singapore for getting the first batch done with 3,000 people, just getting them access. And by the way, you can have it. So there's something we call AI for business. We did it together with INSEAD. So if you have a great Sunday morning, get a coffee, Go online, go AI insert, and you get yourself trained and be literal on what AI means and how you can use it. You know, I'm curious, I mean, this conference is being held against a backdrop of growing uncertainties. I mean, not just the US-China trade war, now volatility in oil. Is that impacting sentiment and how companies are spending and investing for growth? Yeah, look, in general, I would say having global trade discussions are not healthy and it is not great for economic thinking in general, I would say. Um, now, from a technology perspective, I, I have a lens which would say technology is the best place to be competitiveness. It's the best place to actually uh, focus on getting cost optimized. It's the best place to have local and, and global solutions. So as much as I'm very much in the sentiment of I don't like to have these trade discussions, because I think it has impact on, on growth. I think the technology sector itself will be the go-to place to actually help companies going forward, building solutions, which are then bringing them to better places, even in the tensions time we have. That's all good, and that's a great starting point, but in terms of anecdotal evidence, anything that you're seeing that companies are spending less? No, I don't, I don't see spending less. I think we see spending more on having in the context of technology build and data understanding a focus on how to spend. So if you think on how AI is built, it's everything on the basis of data and cloud computing capacity. So there needs to be two spending patterns for everybody to really understand cloud as a scale and how to use data and actually bring data to a meaningful point. So that is where we see as a company a lot of spend coming. And then you have different flavors of that one where you say there's a whole industry on the IoT side connecting information to make better output for, for individuals or for commercial companies. Supply chains is very hard. Even in the situation of trade challenges and global challenges, supply is one of the biggest challenges companies have, how to manage supply chains. That is all based on platforms and data we are giving 
and we want to be great in having these platforms for our customers. You know, Ralph, before Trump came into the picture, companies and governments talked about, uh, I guess, working together in the area of AI. But with Trump, that's becoming increasingly difficult to cross borders. How do you see the development of AI playing out from here forward? I think from a technology perspective, there are a couple of components I, I have in that equation. Number one is, to me, if you look at the whole logic, the software build, the kind of um, technology to have uh, AI as a starting point, a lot of that is actually open source. A lot of that we see on the platform of GitHub. So that is not bound to any boundaries and people are proud and actually very keen to share algorithm and technology to build AI itself. Then the next phase is which company is using which technology to build their own individual service. So what does a bank do to make the ATM able to have a facial recognition payment experience? What does a floor shop do to have um, a handling machine being autonomous to pick and place goods in the times of e-commerce, e which is high scale. And that are different solutions. But I think we are still having that technology being on global scale. The piece where we will see more um, uh, knowledge coming in and more, more guidance coming in is on where data will st stick and be resident and how that will be available made to companies.